Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending Investopedia and HyperChat Social's webinar today, Seven Dirty Little Secrets of LinkedIn, Proven Strategies for Financial Advisors to Get New Clients. My name is Emily Smichael, Manager of Investopedia's Advisor Insights, our free content marketing and lead generation platform for financial advisors. Today's webinar will be presented by Ted Jenkin, the founder and CEO of HyperChat Social and Oxygen Financial. We're excited to have so many of you joining us today. If you have questions during the webinar, you can submit them through the Q&A module on your screen, and we'll do our best to answer them during the webinar or soon after. We'd also love to hear your feedback. Please consider completing the survey in the survey module on your screen after the webinar ends. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the Help widget on your screen. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical issues. Often, simply refreshing the page, the page will help. And if you have not enabled Adobe Flash, you may need to do so in the media module on your screen. Please note there is a supplemental handout that will be available to download from the webinar resources module, and a recorded version of this webinar will be available soon after the live version ends. Be sure to stay tuned until the end when Ted will share some exclusive discounts for advisors who are watching today. Without further ado, here is Ted Jenkins. Hey everybody, uh, how are you doing today? And thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy calendars to uh, come to the webinar, The Seven Dirty Little Secrets of LinkedIn. I'm excited to share a lot of stuff with you today. I will say, before we get the webinar going, uh, for those of you that aren't from New York City, you know, I always wondered what it's like now to be a, a Southern guy to actually have to come to New York City. And I did a coffee meeting before this presentation today, but I happen to be on East 42nd, and the offices of Investopedia are on West 41st. And most people that don't really know New York, that would seem like it just takes a block or two. But I, Ted Jenkins, managed to run around the entire public library before this presentation. So if I get out of breath, you'll know why I'm here. But I'm very excited to uh, give you the presentation today. Please feel free to ask questions and, and uh, take notes. And as opposed to a lot of presentations, we are going to dig into the Internet today. And as opposed to just showing you a PowerPoint deck, I want to spend most of today teaching and educating you about how to use these things to improve your practice, increase your brand, and generate more leads. So just a quick uh, uh, two seconds in here. You know, why do I get up and do this every day? Uh, the loves of my life are my family. Uh, my wife and I just celebrated our 23rd anniversary, and we have uh, three kids. My oldest daughter, who's on the right-hand side there, just turned 20. Uh, it feels real weird to think that you have a 20-year-old, but uh, my middle one is uh, 18. And my youngest is 16, and I have every intention of bringing them into this business, as some of you may with your kids, but it's exciting to be an entrepreneur in America today. There's so much great stuff going on, so that's why I do this. A little bit of background on me, if you uh, uh, don't know me at all, and this is the first time we're getting introduced today, I have to say thanks to my friends here at Investopedia. Um, last year, I think they put out for the first time a ranking of the 100 most influential financial advisors in the entire United States, and I got ranked number four on that list. And as you'll see a little bit today, I think there's a reason for it because when you see what I've done with social media for our own company and our own brand to grow our assets under management and how I use social media to generate new leads for our business, you'll understand better why what we do in our, in our business today. Uh, congratulations for anybody else that was on today that was in the top 100. Uh, there really are some amazing people on that, on that list. Why is social media important? Well, when we get into these tips on LinkedIn, let me just tell you, whether or not you like it, the people that are out there that are your prospects today, they are stalking you. Even the referrals that you get today have Google stalker mentality. They're going to check out your pictures. They might try to track you down on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or some other platform, but they will know more about you than any generation of prospects that have ever found you before. Literally having never paid a public relations company today, I write for the Wall Street Journal on a monthly basis right now. I just got a digital column with uh, CNBC. And then every weekend, I go on CNN headline news where I do live TV segments as a personal finance expert. And what did it cost me? It cost me absolutely nothing except learning the, some of the tips and techniques that we're going to teach you today and how you can apply this in your practice. When you compete for a million-dollar account, let alone a five or a $10 million account, Will the way that you run your practice matter? Sure. Being a CFP? Sure. The fact that you manage X amount of dollars, $500 million or a $1 billion, sure, those all things can help. But 
but people are very influenced by what they see and hear in the media today. In fact, recently, my good friend Fran Tarkington, I don't know how many of you know Fran, but Fran's a Hall of Fame quarterback, played for the Minnesota Vikings. He recently did a program um, that he invited me to, and he said on the program that I was one, the single best marketer that he ever met. And if you don't think that I'm not able to share that with people along the way and it influences them, you're wrong. It influences them in a big way. Now, before we get to the tips and techniques of the program today, if you want to get um, in touch with me for any reason at all, I want to show you how we deliver our business cards today. I stopped carrying business cards four years ago, and I went total technology and total mobile. And the reason is, is that it not only impresses people, but the fact is there is a legitimate way to be able to do texting in your practice. So this is what's known as a one-way texting platform. So if you have your phone in front of you, I know that you probably do because we can't go anywhere without it today. So it's probably on your desk or it's in your jacket. And basically in the two box, I want you to type in the code 89800. You might notice while you're doing this that there are many organizations anywhere from the Red Cross to your local ice cream place that are starting to use text codes so they can figure out how to market you in a decluttered space. You know, email is getting very cluttered today. Direct mail is reasonably dead. Cold calling, I think most of you know that people aren't going to have a phone in the next five years at home. They won't. Everything will come through their mobile phone. So the fact is that um, texting is going to become very important, and it will become widely accepted in our business. So put in 89800, then in the body just put the word TED, T-E-D, and then hit send. When you hit send within 15 seconds, you're going to basically get back a picture that looks like this which is my mobile business card. Note, you can see a picture of me. You may not want to, but it's there. You can add me to your contacts. You can see a little video of my company. You can get directions to the office. You know, if I had certain offerings, I could put all of this on my mobile card. <laughs> People today, more than ever, in every social media platform are all mobile friendly. You know, most of what Facebook views today are on mobile. LinkedIn has flipped over to be more than 50% mobile. It's going to be that way in a very short period of time. Now, the thing you may not know is that when you took my business card, I took your phone number. And what this allows me to do anytime that I want is to send you a drip text. Notice that you can't text me. I can only text you. So it's a one-way text marketing. I think um, I did something in this uh, a while back that you may have read about, but I've been doing it for many, many years, and it's very, very, very powerful stuff. I share this with you because you may see this and say, oh, well, Ted, that's not a really a new magic trick. I've seen that one before. Ask yourself the last dinner party, networking event, family event that you went anywhere, anywhere, and anybody gave you a mobile business card. Your real estate agent? No. Your attorney? No. Your CPA? No. The fact of the matter is if you want to separate yourself from the rest of the competition in our business, you have to have small differentiators like this that make you different when you meet somebody. It makes you noticeable and you're using applied technology. Using those two things will, will absolutely help. You'll get a client if you just do a mobile business card, just from literally using that technology. Now what I want to do, if you'll just let the screen buffer for just a second, is I want to basically um, get you into the bulk of the presentation today, and I want to talk to you about how to basically generate more leads in your business. So it'll take a minute for the screen to get up there, and then once the screen is up, then we can get forward and get into it. Okay, I think it's buffering now, and we'll get there, and now we'll get into real stuff. So I'm going to spend the next 30 to 35 minutes not doing the PowerPoint deck. I'm actually going to try and teach you stuff that you can implement today to be able to increase your brand and generate more leads. Now, first things first, <clears throat> I don't really care what browser you use when you surf. You want to use Safari, you can do it. If you're Mozilla, you, you use whatever it is that you want. But in order to make some of this marketing I'm teaching you today to be effective, you need to use Google Chrome, okay? So when you use Google Chrome, what a lot of people don't realize is that Chrome has created tons and tons and tons of extensions. I have gone through extensive research to test out these extensions to figure out how I could use them within the integration of different social media platforms to be able to generate more leads. And I'm going to show you some of that today. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that you want to download an extension called Duck Soup. Now this is not like D-U-C-K Soup or Duck Soup that you'll order, but it is a platform that integrates with LinkedIn that is going to allow you to do something, I mean, amazing in a revolutionary way when I show you how to do this. So first things first, you go to the Chrome Web Store. When you go in here, you're going to see I type in Duck Soup and I hit 
OK. When I hit OK, you're going to see this extension come up here that I've highlighted. So you see it says Duck Soup for LinkedIn. When you highlight that extension, you're going to cl simply click Add to Chrome. When you click Add to Chrome, what's going to happen is that you're going to get a little uh, button at the very top. Now, I just highlighted it this way so you can see it says Duck Soup Professional Edition. But it's supposed to look like a duck head, but it kind of looks like a duck that got half of its head that's cut off. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very hard to see it. When you get to that extension, what you're going to do is you're going to open it up. And when you open it up, you're going to see a thing that says Source More, Sell More, okay? Now, there are two versions of this duck soup. There's a free version and there's a premium version. But I have to tell you, what, you, what I'm showing you today, you could do on the free version. There are some, for those of you that are really want to market heavily in your CRM database, there's a lot that you can do if you, um, if you decide to integrate and pay premium. Now, here's the thing. When you get into LinkedIn, you're going to start to do some sort of search. And, and just in given time today, Let's assume that one of the markets that you have is that you like to focus on retirees. Now, the truth is you could focus on baby boomers. You could focus on everybody that works for Kimberly Clark or for Nike. Every one of you has a different market you're going after. It might be physicians or C-level executives or you only focus on uh, women executives. Wh whatever it is, we can get down to this query. LinkedIn works on a Boolean logic system. And for those of you that never have heard the term Boolean logic, if I go in here and I say, tell me everybody that's retired and that's in Atlanta. So notice I've typed the query at the top of the page, retired Atlanta. Does everyone see that? And I simply hit send. Most people are under the misnomer that you have to have LinkedIn Premium to be able to access these types of query uh, searches. And the fact of the matter is you don't. We'll talk a little bit about Sales Navigator in a minute. Now, notice in here that it's showing me 41,527 results. So now I have retired people. These are the people that I want. I mean, isn't it interesting to think that a lot of you would love to know when somebody retires from their job because that's when the 401k rollover may be there. That's when there's a major life shift to be thinking about driving income. I'm going to show you in a minute how you can do that. Once this search is in here, now we're going to go back to our duck soup, okay? And you're going to click a button at the top called Options. Notice when I click Options, it opens up an entirely different box, okay? Make sure you're taking notes on this. This is really, really important. When you open Duck Soup, there's a thing that says Automated Actions. And do you see a box here I'm checking and unchecking that says Send to Second and Third Degree Connections? Not First Degree Connections, not people that I do know. These are people that I don't know. And rather than just send them a button in LinkedIn that says Connect, or rather than just send them a note saying, um, you know, hey, Joe, you and I both live in Atlanta. Let's get together. I'm going to send them an actual message. And I may say, do you want to know the number one, the number one way to get more yield on your portfolio in retirement? Okay? Notice what I'm typing in here. Please click yes for my free, your compliance department might not like free, they might like the word complimentary. I always thought they meant the same, but apparently they don't. Uh, but please, my free brochure um, uh, called Seven Ways to Get More Yield on Your Money. Okay, and I don't want to waste all of our time typing the copy, but I just want to show you this. Once this copy is in here and I'm done, I'm going to close out of duck soup. And then basically when I reopen Duck Soup, all I do is click the button search. And you know what happens? Every single day, at up, up to 150 people a day if you're standard LinkedIn, up to 500 a day if you're in premium, it's going to send that message to my query, retired in Atlanta. So every single day, think about this, in one month if I'm on premium or I'm on Sales Navigator, I can send 15,000 people that message every month. Not a message that says connect. Not a message that says, hey, we're both in the area and I want to stay in your network. Because that's a lie. You don't want to stay in their network. You want to get them as a client. I don't, what do I want to stay in your network for? I want you to meet me and decide whether or not I'll be your financial advisor. So what I'm doing in here is now I'm sending a message. Here's the beauty of this. Who's doing the work? The computer is. Not your staff. Not even you. You can spend the rest of your day analyzing portfolios, seeing clients, you are literally going to get 500 a day, and every single day you will get people to click yes 
that want to talk to you about whatever it is that you send them. Small business owner market, no problem. College education, no problem. You want to do in-service distributions with people that all work for UPS, no problem. My whole point to you here is that you have an automated way to be able to generate leads immediately. Okay, now I know if that was fast at all, remember, we'll take questions here at the end, but that's, it's massive. I've been doing this for years now. So the next thing is that LinkedIn has a notification button. And there are a lot of people that say, turn off the notifications in LinkedIn. You don't want that. I have to tell you that is the biggest colossal blunder is to shut those things off. What you want to do is turn the notifications on. Now, here's the thing. Part of the reason the Internet is problematic is that it dupes us into becoming Frankenstein. And the reason that you become Frankenstein is that when you see two buttons, all you think to yourself is, me, Frankenstein, how do I click buttons? And if think about a company like Amazon today. The beauty of Amazon is they, that they know you're Frankenstein, so you just go on to Amazon and you click, keep clicking buttons until there's a package at your house. So when you see that Trey Shelton right here is a new position as the executive director, okay, let me go back to that, what you're going to do is either click the button like or you're going to click the button say congrats. And when you do it, here's what it says. Hey, Trey, congrats on the new job. Do you think Trey's sitting there on the other end? He's like, man, that's Ted Jenkins. He's a good guy. He said, congrats on the new job. He's not doing that. So one of the questions is, how do you automate a system when the major money in motion things happen? I get a new job. I have a birthday. I get a promotion. How do I automate that to get somebody to take action? This is where our trusty friend, the Google Chrome Web Store, comes in. The next trick I'm going to teach you here as a hack is called the Auto Text Expander. See, Google Chrome is really, really smart as a browser. And when you download the Auto Text Expander, you're going to get a button that comes out that looks like this. And what Google Chrome allows you to do is store short code for a really long message. So what I laugh about what's really funny is on Facebook today, I'm almost going to choke if I see one more person write, hey, Facebook friends, thanks for the birthday love, you know, because people get 182 birthday messages from the friends that aren't really your friends, by the way. There's like 10 of them that wanted to send it and 172 that it was obligatory that they sent it. So the reality is that on here, if I knew it was your birthday, notice that I pre-formatted a message. I wanted to wish you an incredibly happy birthday. Hope this year is a profitable and prosperous one for you and your family. Let's connect up soon and talk about something really interesting. Then when I see the LinkedIn notification and somebody has a birthday on here, see it says Scott Krause, happy birthday. I don't wish Scott Krause a happy birthday. I change this. I use my short code, B-D-A-Y, boom. There's my entire message right there. How long does that take you? And if you have a staff person do this or even an intern, it will take them all of but five minutes to do this. And you will be much more effective because you'll separate yourself from the rest of the clowns out there that are basically just sending little buttons. Now imagine Scott was changing jobs. I simply type in change, boom, I have a paragraph. If Scott was a business owner and I was prospecting Scott as a business owner, <laughs> I have all of these key force codes of paragraphs that I've written that are pre-stored. And every morning I go into these notifications, I type out these things and guess what I do? I generate leads every week because I'm different. Now, I can't tell you what copy to write because you're going to have to figure that out on your own and your practice and some of you have minimums and some of you don't. But the reality is to not take advantage of this or even worse, to go on here and basically click a thumb or a button, you're wasting your time. You might as well not do it. So that's my next thing on there is the text autoresponder. I hope you guys like that one. So the next thing I want to talk about in here is just simply about writing blurbs. And this is important just for a minute. Okay. The whole thing is, is that um, when you send a connection note to somebody and you get somebody that's on here, let's go back to this retired thing, okay, even if you're sending notes. When you get on to LinkedIn, let me get rid of this, and you're getting in here and you want to connect with somebody. So Danny's retired. And it brings up this box and it says, you can customize this invitation. The thing is that people are so unoriginal on LinkedIn, it will be easy to separate yourself. For many, many years, the magazines that have done well in grocery stores, and they will forever, are, are magazines like The Star, The Inquirer, and stuff like that. And the reason is that they're excellent at title writing. So if I went in here 
and I wanted to add a note. Adding a note that says, hey, Danny, let's stay in the same network. That You don't want to do that. That doesn't mean anything. You know, here's what Oprah said when she reached out to me yesterday. Right? If I start with something like that, now I have what? I've grabbed your attention. The newspaper, God, this is all in politics today. It's in everything. In Headlines are everything. Here's what Oprah said when she reached out to me yesterday. Here's why the Bitcoin is going to go to $100,000 a coin, dot, dot, dot. You're going to read that. You realize how many Bitcoin things have come out in the last couple of weeks because they know that you'll open it. You're intrigued by it. It's interesting. Writing a thing that says, hey, Danny, let's connect, not interesting. So my whole point in here is that I can do this, and then basically if I have an introduction, I pre-format an introduction paragraph, blah, 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 and then I'm asking Danny for a cup of coffee. Don't ever send a message just to connect. Ask for the order. Say, let's get a cup of coffee, not, hey, I'm here to sell you a 1% fee portfolio. Hey, I'm here to sell you an annuity. Hey, I'm here to sell you a life insurance policy. You want to connect with them for the fact of being able to get in front of them to, um, to get them to come to a meeting, okay? My, my whole point in this is that what I want you to think about is title writing, okay? You, you know, compliance may have an issue with your paragraphs, and you can certainly pre-format them, but certainly you can get creative in writing titles, uh, and that is a big thing in here. Now, the next thing I want to just show you in here is I want to go back to this whole uh, Boolean logic uh, uh, thing up top. You know, when you get in here, you're going to have a choice about um, how you search for people. And even though you might pay for premium or you might do Sales Navigator, which do have better advanced search tools, the reality is you can do still queries. So if I said, tell me everybody who's a VP and at Home Depot, uh, queries generally work on ands or ors or nots. It's like, you know, tell me everybody who likes the Yankees and lives in New York City. Right? So tell me everybody who's a VP at Kimberly Clark, or VP, and they work at Kimberly Clark. Okay? And that is an easy way to be able to get at this because some of you are going vertical inside of a company or you're going vertical inside of a profession. And if I go to VP Home Depot, it's going to tell me who does VP. Now, in some cases, you have to spell out vice president or learn the titles that are in a specific company. And the whole thing is, is that if you don't want to do it that way, if I just type in Home Depot, the other thing that's intelligent in LinkedIn is if I click on Home Depot, I want you to see this here. Almost all these companies have a page. You see how I'm at the Home Depot page right now? Here's the, here's the cool thing about this. There's a little blue hyperlink on the right-hand side, and it says, show me all 78,000 employees that work at, at Home Depot. So they, they, double, they wipe out double counts, so you have 68,794 people. There's everybody at Home Depot. So if you really knew their stock option plan or you knew uh, they had a deferred comp plan or you knew that they had a self-directed brokerage account for 401k plans, you could be much more effective in going vertically in a company. For those of you that sell executive benefits, like you sell 401k plans, and you're like, how do I get to the HR director of a 75-person company? Well, just find the company page and then click the link, and then you'll see the 75 people that work for the company. It's not going to be that hard to find the HR director after that. My whole point is that your, your filter on this, when you filter it, can be substantially better. Now, I get asked the question a lot about whether you should do LinkedIn Premium, regular LinkedIn, or you should do Sales Navigator. If you're really serious about prospecting, and I don't have a dog in the fight, I don't work for LinkedIn, they don't pay me any money, you want to do Sales Navigator. The, really, the, the delta on paying for premium and Sales Navigator and what you get, you might as well do Sales Navigator. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Um, otherwise, just use the free version. If you're not really serious and you're like, I'll dabble in this a little bit and I'll get some leads and blah, 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 then let's just do it that way. So here's what happens. If you go into Sales Navigator, okay, and Sales Navigator is in your drop-down button, the reason to go in here is that when you start to go into whatever your, 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 uh, your search is, okay, and you build out a search, and I just, uh, I'm just going to just, I just want to show you an example of this, okay? And I could pull up a search in here. When I pull up Home Depot in here, and I haven't filtered this all, but I'm just doing it for the point of the discussion today and trying to teach you this, 
In Sales Navigator, one of the biggest things I hear financial advisors say, and by the way, I think about this myself, is how can I get the 401k rollovers? When somebody quits their job, how will I know this? And then how can I get a 401k rollover? So notice that the second box here, I'm, I'm underneath, I'm highlighting it now, says who changed jobs in the last 90 days? Notice now that I've highlighted the 5.1k. And by the way, if I wanted to zoom this quicker and I said, boy, I just want to be in Atlanta, there's 701 people that work for Home Depot that changed jobs in the last 90 days. Now, the fact is some of those could be internal job promotions that got promoted, but they could be external. But if I work Home Depot, I have 701 leads right here, right in front of my face. I know immediately, instantaneously when it happens. If I want to get more direct with them, what I can do is find out who got mentioned in the news. So you see how Pratt, like Pratt may be a guy, or Pratt, I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly, he works for Home Depot. He was mentioned in, it's good to be Home Depot. So I'm going to send a note to, to Pratt or Pratt, and I'm going to go, hey, Pratt, I noticed you in Retail Wire. What a great article you were in. You have such insight on where the retail industry is headed, and it's amazing what's happening at Home Depot. I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee and see if we could talk more. If I want to find out who posted on LinkedIn and sort of butter people up that way, I can do it this way by going to the slide that says who's posted in the last 30 days. And by the way, those of you that are thinking about finding common interests, I can even go quickly to see what experiences we share. Do we all like golf? Are we all in social media marketing? Are we in different groups that we didn't even know that we were in before? The, the, the ability to basically search and sort and generate leads in here are are so much bigger. No matter what platform you pick, if you pick LinkedIn free or you pick LinkedIn premium, you can always save a search. And I will tell you, it's really important to save searches because if I save the search of the, the group we just did, Retired Atlanta, every single week or every single month, LinkedIn will deliver me an email to my mailbox that basically says, hey, here's all the people that just went and are now retired and are in Atlanta. Wouldn't you like to know when somebody changes their status from employed to now retired? Well, you can know that because it's going to force feed that lead into your, into your uh, email box. Really, really powerful stuff. Uh, ultimately, it would be great on Facebook if you got the feed that said, like, who changed the relationship to married, divorced, it's complicated, you might want to avoid those. Uh, but I'm just saying to you in general, this is why what you look at at Sales Navigator. Now, one of the slides that Investopedia is going to give to you today is they're going to give you something today as a handout that's called your LinkedIn selling score. We're not going to have the time today to go through the whole selling score, and it's really why you should take the slide from Investopedia today. But the thing that I want to tell you is that LinkedIn wants to give you free leads. Wait a minute. Say that again. LinkedIn wants to give you free leads. Really, Ted? Yeah, they do. The problem is, is that they don't base the free leads on, are you a CFP? Are you somebody that manages $100 million? Are you a really good financial advisor? They don't care. You know what they do care about? They care a lot about if you use their software a lot, which kind of makes sense if you think about it because they only make money if you do what? Use their software a lot. So they have created an algorithm to give you something called a social selling score. Now, you can see on mine, I'm an 89. When I play around with it, I've gotten as high as 94. I'm, I think it might be a statistical impossibility to get 100 unless you pay LinkedIn. But the thing I will tell you is you can see at the top, I'm the top 1% where? In my industry, with all of us on the phone, and I'm top 1% in my rank. So LinkedIn sees me as a credible social seller. Consequently, what LinkedIn did is LinkedIn built a new platform. And this platform right now is called ProFinder. You go to the Work uh, button on your nav tool, and then you click a drop-down. And then you click ProFinder. When you click ProFinder, you're going to see a screen that comes up that looks like this. Make sense? Screen comes up, says, take the project from to do to done, blah, blah, blah. What this is is basically a B2C and a B2B consumer place that I promise you that LinkedIn will eventually monetize. They just haven't figured out how to do it yet but they will. And what's on here is you can find a career coach, you can get your resume reviewed, you can find an accountant, you can find an interior designer, you can find a real estate agent. So if I said, I want to find a financial advisor, oh, better yet, a certified financial planner, and I click get started, me, the prospect, 
is going to go through a questionnaire. And it's going to ask me some basic questions. What am I interested in? Investment management and retirement planning. Uh, what are my needs? Uh, do I want a one-time deal? Do I want an ongoing relationship? Am I interested in asset management or am I not? Do I have these needs uh, necessary to fill in the next two weeks or is it in the next two years? Once those set of questions are done, LinkedIn feeds this lead to five financial advisors. So the moment you get this lead in your mailbox, guess what you need to do? Act swiftly. Because you know, by the way, if you don't act swiftly, somebody else is going to snap up that lead. They are going to snap it up. And, and you have to have an idea about what proposal you're going to offer them. And then, much like a, an app called Thumbtack.com, you can bid, it, bid the job out, they'll bid the job out, and then they decide who they want as their financial advisor. I got 50 leads from this last year. Not five, not 10, 50 leads for what? You know how much this cost me? Free. And believe me, I've been a financial advisor for 26 years. Free is still our favorite word. You can say you like to spend money, but I know that you don't. Free is still our favorite word. So this is a free way to get leads, but guess what? You have to be a social seller. And by the way, it kind of makes sense. You know, over the years that I've managed people as financial advisors and being on the producer side, the reality is a lot of advisors just don't follow up with leads. They get them, but they don't call them. And so the reality is they know because I'm social and I'm on here every day, I'm going to call them. And that's where they're going to feed the leads. So if you take just this action on here, <laughs> like work on your social selling score and sign up for ProFinder, which is free, I guarantee you in the next year you'll generate at least one lead, even if your score isn't that great. But if it's really, really good, you'll generate a lot more. All right. I'm hoping this is helping you so far, but now I'm going to show you one of the single biggest mistakes that financial advisors make. You see, when you get into LinkedIn and you decide that you want to basically make a post, so ho 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 hum I'm going to work this day, I want to make a post, I go here. So what do I want to write about, okay? Let's say, uh, you know, millennials, did I spell that right, are broke, Student debt. I, I want to find an article about student debt because I'm so up in arms around where student debt is. It's going to be the next big bubble, blah, blah, blah. I think that'll be good. So here's one from Forbes. Three, three, uh, 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 what is it saying here? Three money issues millennials stress about the most. I think I've read that one like 57 times, but it's on here. Now, if I take this link and I go into LinkedIn and I just post it here, the good news is I did something social. I posted an article that people are going to look at, and I'm hoping that basically when you read it, that eventually you're like, wow, Ted's a really smart guy, and he posts this really witty, smart content, and I'm going to hire him. And the reality is that's never going to happen to you because people are distracted on the Internet. And the moment that you send them to Forbes, the problem is once you've sent them to Forbes, what is the reason for them to return <coughs> to your website? There is no reason. They're not going to do it. No, people aren't on Forbes and they're like, oh, yeah, where did I read about this article? Yeah, yeah, that Ted Jenkins guy, he gave it to me. I better go back and, like, tell him how great I thought it was. Instead, what I want you to do whoops, is I want you to uh, uh, go to a website that I'm going to give you today called Snipply, S-N-I-P dot L-Y. Now, how does this work? So what Snipply does is Snipply is a conversion funnel platform. So when I go in here and I put in this article, notice I'm going to put in the same article. What Snipply does is it brings up a precursor of what this is going to look like. So the gray screen that you see right now, what will end up happening is that's where the article is going to be. What I can do in here is that I have a message that I overlay on the article that allows people to get back to me. Uh, do you want more retirement income? I'm just making this up, by the way. Okay? Dot, dot, dot. And then basically I write, learn more now, and then I send them to my website, oxygen, oxygenfinancial.net. Because when they click the link, it's going to move them out of the Forbes article, and it's going to move them back to my website. That's where I want them to go. Contact page, my website, whatever way it is that they sign up to do something with me. Now what happens is when I create the SNP, <laughs> notice it gives me a link here. I take this link. Well, that wasn't good. I take this link, and what I do is I go back into LinkedIn. So I'm not going to do this one. What I'm going to do is this one. 
And the difference is now, let me just do this for the sake of it, okay? So I post this article. Watch. Now that I post this article, when I go to this article, notice it's not just the article anymore, but in the lower left-hand corner, who's in the left-hand corner? It's Ted Jenkins. Okay? Now, that, that should come up, or you might not be able to see it at the bottom, but I'm there at the bottom. Yeah, oh, I might need to scroll. Oh, let me scroll down here. Yeah, that may be it. Well, it may be hard to see, but your, your link is going to be there on the bottom. It's on my computer, but it may not show up on yours. The screen might be getting cut off. So this is incredibly important because it allows you to create conversion funnels. And I've got to tell you something. <clears throat> Why you want to do this social media? Yeah, it might help your brand. Yes, you know, people say, I saw you on there, but don't you want to generate more leads? Don't you want to generate leads? So it's up to you to figure out the publishing content. I can't figure that out for you. But then you use Snipply to create the links on there to be able to do this, okay? And this is what we've been doing for a lot of years right now. And in the, the deck that um, Investopedia will give you, you're going to see all of the different uh, links, and there's like sort of a, a blow-by-blow blow about how to make that happen. See, the thing is, um, when you do LinkedIn, if you get clicks and you drive people out of LinkedIn to your website, let me show you the tale of two stories, okay? So uh, I'm going to show you three things here, just try to give you some sense. By the way, if the ACE Advisory Group is on today, I, this was in no intention to be derogatory at all. I'm just using this as a sample because a lot of advisors, when they build out their website, they build these templates that in your head, it looks good. ACE Advisory Group, here's our client center. We do comprehensive planning, wealth management. By the way, there's the picture of the fake guy and the fake couple. It all looks really wonderful. People are going to see that we are a money manager. Here's a question I want to ask you. Where on this page can somebody take action to become a lead? That is the question. What makes Amazon super ninja deadly in getting you to spend money is that they know that if you're on a page long enough, you'll click buttons. And then they know, they know this, that once you start clicking buttons, you'll click more buttons until eventually you figure out how to buy something. And I created my website, which by the way, forget about the aesthetics, it's designed to get you to click buttons to decide to take action to engage in our firm. And so this is an example of one that I would never do my website this way, because even if you got traffic to come to your website, so what? Your business is open 24-7 today. It is open all the time. And by the way, I really don't know if people have sleep problems, but what I do know is that people are up all the time surfing the net doing all sorts of weird stuff. They're Google stalking. They're checking you out on Facebook. I took a trip to Greece. And when I came back, it was so funny. I'd meet someone two weeks later. They were like, hey, how was that uh, trip to Greece? And I, I was thinking, I don't remember talking to you about that, which means you had to have snooped on my page to really see what was happening. And it wasn't like, hey, you took a trip to Greece. It was like, how was that bar you went to in uh, Santorini? And it's like, what? What were you looking at? So people are looking at your site every day. And if you have a web developer, I'm not telling you to fire a web developer. What I would tell you is that if 1,000 people hit your site last month, how many became elite? And if the answer is zero, then you need to fire whoever you have. And just you really do because I don't know what's the point of having the website. Last year, Investopedia ranked Jeff Rose, who's a friend of mine and a really great guy, number five in the country as a social media financial advisor. He is an example of somebody who does an amazing job. But if you look at his website versus the ACE Advisory Group, what's Jeff doing in the very beginning? He's saying financial freedom is not a myth. I'm Jeff. Here's my mission. Get started. Um, and, and then uh, there's a woman that got ranked uh, uh, sixth last year. Her, her website is called Financially Wise Women. Her name is Brittany Castro. She does a great job. Notice the same thing like Jeff when you go to the website. It basically says clarity is the first step towards wealth. I purposely went on Brittany's website because one of the things you want to install to become a better converter off of LinkedIn is something called a pop-out box. Your web designers will tell you something that you should write down called bounce rate. Bounce rate basically means like if 100 people come to your home page, how long do they stay on that page before they bounce, right, before they exit? And if you have 100 people that come to your website and within nine seconds, 95% of them bounce off the website, well, within nine seconds, 
You've got to have a box like this that comes up that basically says, take some action. So think about this like you owned a department store. You're like, hey, Ted, you came in. I know you're going to shop around. Um, do you want to do something? Do you want to buy something, right? And if you don't ask that question to the person that's coming to your website, you're not going to generate more leads. So Brittany says, three tips to a, a, an investor. I want this. It takes you to another page, and boom, you can sign up for her book. And that lead goes to her, and then I don't know what they do with it, but in, in theory, obviously, you're going to call, call the lead. Does that make sense? Uh, folks, this is why I'm telling you this, that you have to be able to do this this way. All right. Let me tell you two last things, and then we'll, we'll take some time for Q&A. I know we're about 45 minutes in, but I want to leave about 10 minutes for Q&A. Most advisors, as you build your business plan for 2018, if I ask you what's the number one way you're going to get clients, you're going to tell me referrals. Or you may say, you know, Ted, we're, we're a referral practice. Well, yeah, duh. Well, I mean, we're all referral practices, but the question is, how many referrals did you get last year? Oxygen Financial this year has done 177 referral new clients already this year. 177. Is your answer 6, 8, 10? So every meeting that you go to next year, what I want you to do is just simply go to the person for the meeting. Let's say your client is Bob Heskamp. And what you can tell is that Bob and you have 48 mutual connections. I'm not even asking you to print out the whole list, but I would have you or your staff simply print out the list of the first-degree connections, maybe 10 of them. And in the meeting, you just say, you know, Bob, you and I are both on LinkedIn. I wonder if you could do me a huge favor. Um, Scott Safon, <laughs> you know him and I know him, but I don't know Scott that well. Would you be willing to make a virtual introduction? Not a physical introduction, but a virtual one. And most of you may not realize this, but on each, one of your, on each one of your profiles, there are three buttons that are here. And you can see this thing that says share a profile. And by clicking that button, we can have two people introduce and simply say, uh, you know, hey, Joe, I want, to, I want you to meet my financial advisor, Ted Jenkin. He's a great guy. I think you guys should get together. They share my profile, and now I have a virtual introduction. You need to recognize in this day of the Internet that if you're waiting for your phone to ring, you're going to wait forever. People have muscles of steel when they do things on the Internet. You know this because when people write comments on, like, stories on the Internet, they'll go, like, crazy. But if you do it face-to-face, -face, they're like a mouse. So the thing is, you want to ask your clients to make a virtual introduction inside of LinkedIn. A lot of them will do it right inside. They'll do it right for you, like, literally, like, right at your desk. And if you do just what I'm telling you here, Print out the list of the first degree connections. Ask your client to make one or two virtual introductions. You'll double your referrals from what you got in 2017. It really is that easy if you just implement the system to be able to do it. And the last thing I want to uh, tell you here before we do some Q&A today is that if you really want to get more referrals, um, what you know about financial planning and taxes and all that doesn't really mean that much, and I'm going to tell you why. See, the big mistake with content and the way that financial advisors sort of try to get their clients to refer is that you think that people are socially interested in financial content. The reality is that nobody goes to a dinner party and basically says, hey, Ted, um, man, uh, how are the kids? So uh, how's that uh, large cap value fund doing in your 401k plan? People don't talk like that. Nobody goes to a party and they basically say, hey, how you doing? How's that uh, long-term care policy that you bought? <laughs> people don't talk like that. In neighborhoods, people talk about neighborhood stuff. The tennis coach that they hate, which kid basically TP'd somebody else's house, you know, who's the drunk in the neighborhood. They just talk about that kind of stuff. Why am I telling you this? Because if you teach your clients something that they can teach somebody else, on the Internet today, people are fascinated with knowing websites and apps that they can get deals or something cool that they didn't know before. And when they know that, the first thing they want to do is be like, hey, let me show you something that I know that you don't know, because it makes them look smart. And when those people ask, where did you learn that, they're going to say you. Now, I'm going to show you one today, and basically this one is called Turo, T-U-R-O. I, don't, I can't see the screen, but a show of hands, how many people have heard of Turo? I don't know how many of you have ever used Airbnb before, but this is basically Airbnb for cars. 
You can go to any city, New York City or anywhere else, and as opposed to going to Hertz, Avis, Enterprise, or any of those places, you can simply dial up with somebody else and you can rent their car. You want a Maserati? Great, we can do it. You're broke and you don't have any money, then you're driving a Chevy Cruze. What can I tell you? You know, it's going to be $24 a day. The whole point is that these apps and these systems are coming out so fast today that if, if you teach them to people, you are going to win them over and they're going to teach other stuff. I'm going to teach you one more here today called Tunity, T-U-N-I-T-Y. This is an app that basically once you download it, you can go into a bar or restaurant, and when that game is playing, NFL football, college championship, you can simply take a picture of the screen, and then the sound from that TV will come into your phone. I know when I tell you this, you're going to be saying, what? Yeah, when you're in a crowded bar, especially those of you who live in New York City here, and you see the TV, and you're like gazing into it, but it doesn't have any sound, simply put your phone up, take a picture of the TV, and the frequency will sync with the TV and the sound will come into your phone and thereby you can hear the commentary of the game. How cool would it be for you to walk into a bar, an airport lounge or somewhere and show somebody this and they say, that is really cool. Are you in technology? No, I'm actually the furthest away from technology. I manage a lot of money for people. But the reality is I know a lot of stuff. And this starts the dialogue socially of a conversation that turns into one that's financial. Does everyone get that? It's really important because I think it's a disconnect for financial advisors. You're not going to go into a bar and be like, hey, uh, well, you buying some Bitcoin? Now, you might do that because it's social. You're not going to go into a bar and be like, have you looked at the uh, alpha on the uh, most recent uh, Oppenheimer large cap value fund? You know, People don't talk like that. This is the way that you get your clients talking about you and how, in part, we drove, we'll end up driving, it'll be more than 177. I hope we get to 200. 200 referral clients this year, 200 um, in our business. So with that being said, um, what I wanted to do, and I know that I, I hope that whatever we talked about today, you are all uh, get a lot, of, a lot of value from this. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, wrap this thing up by, by simply saying to you that, um, you know, I know being a financial advisor is tough. And I know that uh, I know that regulations are extremely tough out there today. But basically, um, let's just see if I get this up here. I'm playing with the slides here, guys. We'll be up there in a second. That I have a a program here. I was I was thought I was doing this right, but apparently I'm not. I have a program that I put together. I'm just going to flip through this because it's not working for me. And this program is called the Social Media Black Book. And if you went through today and you're thinking to yourself, hey, Ted went through a lot of stuff and I'm not sure I know how to do this, just go to the website now called BeATopAdvisor.com, BeATopAdvisor.com, and for coming to the webinar today, I normally will charge $997 on the street to take a, a really elaborate course in this stuff. I just gave you some highlights today. And if you type in the code Investopedia, you can get it for $497. And there's 13 uh, courses on here, how-to videos. There's uh, all sorts of FINRA-reviewed eBooks and so much material that it can make a real dent in what you do in 2018. And so I never, I never designed this thing to be a business because I'm a financial advisor just like you, and we've got 30-plus employees, and we've got a big practice. But I really feel like, you know, it's time to make the change for people. The old ways of doing marketing, you can do them, but there's so many new ways that you can get people to chase you as opposed to the old game of you chasing them. So what I wanted to do is open it up for questions. We'll leave the slide up here for beatopadvisor.com, and uh, we'll take the last seven or eight minutes for, for questions. Yeah, thanks, Ted. So let's get back to the initial topic um, around mobile business cards. We have a question from Shanna who is wondering if there are some out-of-the-box solutions for those mobile business cards. How do people create those? Yeah, so the, the mobile cards are very, very easy to create. Um, if, you, uh, if you go, do you want me to give a website? Sure. You can go to a, a website. Um, the easiest thing is called Ditch the Name Tag. So think about it, D-I-T-C-H, the name tag dot com. And you can set up a, a mobile card there. And based upon what you do in your practice, I recommend putting a video in there. 
And I also recommend putting the the links to the key parts of your website that you people want to see, that people want to see, but you need to make sure that your website is mobile friendly. So giving away like free ebooks or something on your services would be very valuable. If those of you on here that work for a broker dealer, it will take me all of but five minutes to explain it to your marketing and compliance department because this is 100% compliant. Everything is captured for electronic communications records and it will go through the company's compliance system. So, and, and I got to tell you what, 98% of the people that you send a text to open it up. Your MailChimp and Constant Contact, if you got 20 now, you'd be really happy. But I bet most of you it's between like 5 and 15%. Great. Well, so you actually answered another question um, as you were talking. Caleb is asking, how do you archive your text marketing for compliance purposes? So everything dependent upon the broker dealer or the RIA, we archive through your email system. So every text basically has a has an instant replication into a master compliance mailbox or wherever you're doing compliance mailbox. So if in fact an auditor down the road wants to see what went out to consumers, you would see every text, every recipient, every phone number. Um, obviously your compliance department might have to approve the small message that you send out. Um, and if you add links to the message, be smart about it. Just send them to your website. It's already approved or send them to somewhere on your website. Don't make more, more work for yourself. Okay, great. So let's switch to LinkedIn. You were showing some great tips around personalizing messages and connection requests, but are there character limits there? Yeah, um, on the notes, I can't remember if it's um, 500 characters or there is one in the basic notes box. The long message boxes, I think it's 2,000 characters. It's a massive box that's in there. The notes one has some limitations. I'm not sure if it's 250 characters or 250 words, but there's a, a limitation that's on there. And that's why you have to kind of tinker around with your message. If you, if those of you that take the social media black book, I've pre-written 50 LinkedIn blurbs. So if you don't want to think this out, I've pre-written them. Obviously, I've gone through compliance at my broker dealer, but you'd have to run them through yours. But obviously, uh, we, we put them together with a compliance hat on. So if you go to be a top advisor and you end up taking the course, you can have all the blurbs. If not, there is one on the main uh, introduction note box, but on the message box, it's, it's a monster box. You can put a lot of stuff in. Okay, great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the different options with LinkedIn. You were sort of discussing LinkedIn Premium versus Sales Navigator, but if an advisor is just using some of the search techniques that you were showing and just running those kind of queries to find potential leads, do you recommend they just stick with the free version and not bother with any of the other add-ons that cost money? Yeah, this is what I think about it. It's like you're a tinker in the way that you market. I mean, honestly, you can do a lot of stuff on the free version. If you're going to be a serious marketer and, and you know, you really want to get lots of rollovers like I was showing on Sales Navigator today, I mean, you have to ask yourself how much is a thousand bucks a year, right? You know, I mean, a thousand bucks a year for most of you I'm thinking is one sale. And it's a $100,000 wrap account, and that doesn't even include the equity you get. So to me, I, I mean, it's a rounding error, you know, but, you know, you have to choose for yourself. Okay, so let's do one last question um, from Shanna again. So she's actually already been experiencing ProFinder, and has been using it for more than a year. Nice. Um, and she says she's gotten about five leads, but without any converting, and she felt like she's been on the spot with all of them. So is it possible she's not getting even more leads or better leads because of her social selling score? Yeah, that's possible. You know, I definitely noticed that they'll separate out the leads. So I'm not saying you're getting all the broke people that have credit card debt. What I will say is you might want to check your proposal system. Again, remember, when people read stuff on the Internet, um, they read it a different way than when you would pitch your proposal face-to-face. -face. So if your proposal is real explanatory in there, and it, it feels that way, that's probably what they're reading, you shouldn't be afraid to sell on the proposal, right? Because you know you're going to be competing against other people in the same uh, genre. So, you know, I write my proposals, um, you know, in that, in that manner. Um, and I did mean to say in here because we didn't discuss this today, and I think many of you may have seen this before, but um, I didn't talk a lot about the media stuff as a whole because it's a lot easier to get on TV and the newspapers than you would think. But there is a great website out there called helperreporter.com. 
or Harrow, you need to have some patience if you start to do it. But when I started this, I don't use Harrow anymore because I have relationships with reporters. But if your idea is to get quoted digitally 20 or 30 times over the next year, it's your easiest way, uh, easiest way to do it. Um, but you need to be consistent with it if you do it. And again, all those mentions matter. People see them on LinkedIn. They show up in Google. Uh, all those things um, matter. Okay, great. Well, I think we'll end there for today. You covered a lot of great material, Ted, and I hope that everyone was taking very detailed notes while you were speaking. Um, so thank you again, Ted, for presenting, and thanks to everyone who attended today's webinar. We hope this was really useful to you. Remember, there's the handout in the resources module that you can download, and also a recorded version of what you saw today will be available for download um, by about 5 p.m. tomorrow. You should get an email with that link. If you have questions that were not answered today or you think of questions later, you can email advisors at investopedia.com and we'll send you more information or we'll connect you with Ted and HyperChat Social and hopefully answer all of your questions. Um, and we are planning more webinars for advisors like you in the next year, so please do fill out the survey module or just send us some feedback. Let us know what types of sessions you would like to see in the future that will be helpful to you. So thanks again and we'll see you at our next webinar.